Hello, my name is Eric Elliott. Welcome to the missing introduction to React. Now, a lot of React learning resources jump right into building components, which is great. One of the best ways to learn is to actually start playing with things. Um, but also, they tend to skip learning about what React is all about in the first place. And that can cause a lot of confusion, and it can cause a lot of bugs in your applications. So today, I'm going to show you, I'm going to tell you what React is all about and why it's so cool, why it is the number one framework in the, in the JavaScript ecosystem. And hopefully, that'll help you build much better applications. So um, before we jump in, head on over to ericelliotjs.com if you haven't already, and sign up because there is going to be a series on this topic. Um, you can already go in there and watch me build a real React applications in the Shotgun series, and there's also a detailed, uh, very detailed um, series on unit testing and how to test React components and stuff like that. So head on over there and check that out. In the meantime, let's get back to it, all right? So the first thing that you need to understand about, about React is the main reason that React exists. Um, so back when they were building React, they were building a very complex application, integrating chat into this very complex application. And um, they were frustrated with a lot of the common problems in existing uh, UI frameworks. And one of those problems was the tendency to have race conditions because you were uh, reading from the DOM to determine the state that you were supposed to produce in the next DOM render and things like that. Those kinds of race conditions are caused by shared mutable state. And what the React team figured out was they could eliminate all a lot of the problems that they were having by just forgetting about trying to mutate state, right? Um, by the way, the DOM is like the single biggest source of shared mutable state in a lot of applications. And it was back then in 2013 before React came along and changed how people think about building uh, applications and bas basically the component model and, and having uh, some known state render the component. And then uh, you don't mess around with the DOM. You don't directly try to manipulate the DOM. Um, that wasn't really a big thing before React came along. And uh, a lot of the frameworks of the time had something called two-way data binding, uh, including Angular, which was the, the biggest uh, framework of the time. Uh, now it's the second biggest, <laughs> right? Um, in Angular, what would happen is they had this digest loop. And it would count how many times a thing tried to re-render in the same loop. And uh, once it hit 10, it like gave up and said, you're probably stuck in an infinite loop. Well, those loops are caused by um, something updating in the DOM, triggering a, an update in a model, which triggers a re-render of the DOM and stuff like that. So that could create these cascading sequences of changes to your DOM. And the React team was like, this is an impossible situation. What if we just didn't have to deal with mutation at all, right? So React's big innovations were a couple of things, right? What I want you to know is that life is simpler when UI components are unaware of the network, unaware of business logic, and unaware of app state. Uh, given the same props, always render the same data. And that is the key innovation that the React team came up with, is they were like, um, uh, they said, the simplest way we've found conceptually to structure and render our views is just to try to mu avoid mutation altogether. So they did that with two things, unidirectional data binding instead of two-way data binding, right? Which means that we'll get into a known state, then we'll render some DOM output, then the model will update, right? Which they call the store. The model will update, and that will trigger a re-render and that goes from the known state to actions and so on. So that life cycle looks like this. We start with a view. Um, we get some actions that trigger some, th some changes. That th those actions get dispatched to the store. The store desi decides how to update the state. And then that, trenders, that triggers a re-render of the view. So it's all one way, unidirectional data binding. And that helps us produce deterministic view renders. This is the main point that you need to understand about React, 
is that the whole reason that it exists is to give you those deterministic view renders. So if you are going around mutating your state um, without going through like a central like dispatcher to the store, right? if you're just going and grabbing any random state and mutating it at any, any random time, including the DOM, right? then you're defeating the purpose of using the Re React in the first place. So embrace the immutability, right? Embrace the composability, embrace this one-way data model, and um, that's going to make things go a lot smoother for you. And one way that, that React does this is with the component lifecycle, right? So let's jump to this section here. The component lifecycle is, uh, is broken down into three, two, different, two different parts, basically. Right? We have the mount, update, and unmount cycle. So when something, when a component gets drawn to the screen, it mounts. That means like React like attaches all this stuff to it, right? And then it gets into the update state cycle. Updates are triggered when the state of the component changes, right? While the component is rendering, you cannot directly change the state. So instead of changing the state, you'll call set state or you'll call um, you'll call the use state reducer function um, dispatch from use reducer um, or use state, right? The, st the set function from use state. And those things won't actually mutate the state. Uh, they won't actually change the state while it's rendering in the render function. It waits until it gets to the commit phase of the render part of the cycle, right? So that we have render, pre-commit, which is rarely used but sometimes needed. And then we'll get to the commit phase. And at the commit phase, it's actually drawn to the screen. And uh, it's actually drawn to the DOM. And then it calls component did update, right? And in that process, after it's done all the, all the commits, then it sets the new state. And that triggers the next render, right? So. Um, that gives us the deterministic view render, the mutable state kind of view of the world. And that is what makes React unique. So if you're going to build successful React applications, you need to keep that in mind. Avoid mutation, avoid side effects, right? And then use React's tools like use state and use reducer and um, and use effect if you need side effects. Use React's tools to do all those things, and your life is going to be much, much easier. All right, uh, that's all I've got for you right now. We'll talk to you later.